How we doing? This is Fox back again. Uh, something a bit different today. Native Instruments Razor plays inside the reactor player. Really underrated, really powerful additive synthesizer. And today I have created a deep house bass for you. So I'm just going to play it through quickly so you can get a grasp of what the sound is before we get started. <laughs> There you have it, pretty decent deep house bass. Um, Razor being an additive synthesizer and the clarity of the oscillator is it's not really easy to make a, a deep analog sounding bass with this. It's took me quite a while to be happy with this. <clears throat> There's a lot of real fine tuning on the filters and I've had to use two low pass filters to get it how I sounding, how I wanted it sounding. Strange, I mean, you'll see when I add them one by one what difference it makes having the two. This metal plug-in this metal uh, in the dissonance effects is a real big help. Um, it really helped me get that sort of twang at the start of the sounds that I was looking for and also the saturation to gritty the sound up later on. So yeah, that is it. There's a simple delay on the uh, channel, nothing else. I'll delete that for now so you can hear just what's happening inside Razor. We've got some macros set up later on. I'll talk for the routing for these. Nice plucky deep house bass. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and initialize this. And now you do that with Razor. It's in the Aerosmith folder, right at the top, init Razor. So this is what you get to start with. You get one pulse to saw oscillator on and the low pass filter on. We'll turn the low pass filter off for now. We'll click on the oscillator one waveform so you can see what's going on. <laughs> Nice and straightforward. We're on a full saw at the minute, which has got pretty much every harmonic. We're going to pull it down to just to the left, so it's leaning towards a pulse. Um, the main amp envelope, I pulled the sustain down to zero, the release down to zero, and I had the attack just around about 50, 51. Okay, oscillator 2 was a pulse width, which is pretty much just a square pulse width. I had the pulse width down to about 1 o'clock on a clock dial. Kept the ratio and the colour for both oscillators where it comes as standard and both the amps round and full. Quite tinny, quite boring. It's amazing uh, what you can do with a couple of decent filters and some effects to get the sound going. So yeah, so filter one is a low pass filter, which it comes on as standard. I'm gonna click it, turn it on. Um, I pull the cut off way down to about eight o'clock on a clock dial. You're not gonna hear hardly anything because we're gonna use an envelope to open this up. Uh, boost, width and slope, all down to zero. We're gonna use an envelope on uh, the second filter that we do to give us some movement with a boost. So yeah, the envelope what I used to control the cutoff was envelope two, this little one down here. Uh, these three slots here are the three separate modulations you can have for the cutoff if you want. We're only gonna use one. We're gonna use envelope two. So click on this little dot at the bottom, choose envelope two. Now we're gonna set this up so it's a nice plucky uh, envelope. It's pretty much the same as the uh, envelope for the amp envelope. So no release. No sustain, no attack, and then the decay just back of standard. I say virtually identical to the amp envelope. And now we're going to dial the amount that we want. We want it to go all the way around to full. <coughs> Still sounds very square and very boring at the minute. I say. The introduction of another low pass filter is a big, big help to this. So, same again, low pass filter. Turn it on. 
And the cutoff for this I had round pretty much exactly the same as the last one, probably maybe a little bit slower. Same envelope again, envelope two. Open it full. Boost to around about 11 o'clock, width to dead center and slope in between eight and nine o'clock. Maybe pull this back just shy of full. Don't do anything with the attack decay and damp on these. Uh, we've done the, a separate envelope for the cutoffs. So that's pretty much it. I say that's real basic modulation, just an envelope on both filters, just cutting them open. I mean, I'll show you the difference with the one filter and then two so you can hear the difference. Not much is getting through from the first filter into the second, but still, I'd still leave it on as we had. Maybe give it a tiny little bit of boost. So yeah, the effects I chose was a metal. I don't really understand what these dissonant effects do. I just cycle through until I find one that I want. This metal one added a real nice bit of grit to the sound. So, so I turned it on. Pitched as you turn the amount around, the pitch goes up. This is going to give us that deep, housey sort of ping at the start of the sounds. We're going to use a different envelope for this. We're going to use envelope three. So pull the amount to dead zero. Modulation box, envelope three, which is this one. We're going to set this one up. It's going to have a much quicker attack than the other two. That's why I chose a different one. The attack wants to be pulled down to about nine o'clock on a clock dial. And the envelope amount wants to be, well, we'll play with it, see what it sounds like. It's a bit too much there, so. Around about there, about three o'clock, quarter of the way around to the right. Um, I did have the pitch on the main voicing section down one octave actually, so I'll do that now. Should have done that at the start. Sound a lot deeper now, a lot more like you'd expect from a, a deep mouse bass. I'm going to pull the glide down to zero, although inside the MIDI clip we've got no, over, no notes overlapping, so the glide wouldn't be coming into effect anyway. Uh, we've got it on mono. The safe bass, I'll turn that on as well now before I go ahead and set the lip limiter up. I'll turn that on. This is just like a sub bass in effect. The amount I add at in between 1 and 2 o'clock, bass level at the same, and the slope where it comes is standard about 11 o'clock. Subtle, subtle amount, but it is adding something to the low end. So the only other effect I used was in the limiter section was the saturator. So I turned it on. I had the drive pretty much where it comes as standard, about 10 o'clock. And the drive high just shy, dead centre to the left. Makes a hell of a difference, just warms the patch up nicely. Without. And with. Okay, that's it, real straightforward. I mean, it sounds pretty good as it is there. I mean, um, the only thing I did was modulate a couple of these parameters with a couple of the macros. Um, you haven't got control over every single parameter. When you click on the macros, you've got two slots for oscillators, one for each oscillator. When you click on it, it highlights the parameters that can be modulated. These new rings come up at the bottom. So when you click on the filter one, let these three comes up. So you can modulate all of the parameters, but you've only got one slot. And what we wanted to do was for filter one. So any really, really small amounts for filter one, 
it's filter one doesn't mean that you can only do it for filter one it's just the first modulation slot for the filters and all I did was modulate the filter two it was really tiny amounts I mean you can see I click on it I dot it positive just that tiny amount pretty much the same on all three of these positive and the width probably a little bit more Here's the difference that's going to make when we now apply this macro knob round. Probably a little bit too much on the boost, just pull it back slightly. The boost is like the resonance. Just giving it a bit of a nice bit of resonant twang to the notes. I thought it was a nice neat addition if you wanted it. You could sort of bring it in towards the end of 8 bars or 16 bars as you got a bit of a transition in the track. Uh, the other, other one I did was one of the effects slots. I used an FX2. You can use either one. And that, let's see, it gives you the parameters again within the effects that you use. I didn't use anything with the uh, voice in effects because these are all panning, reverb and stereo effects because it's a bass patch in... Oh, I've got it on poly, but it wants to be on mono. Because it's a bass patch on mono, we don't want it to be that wide one. It's sitting nice and central in the mix, so these effects weren't going to add anything to the sound as a whole. But yeah, on the saturation, I for the macro for FX2, all I did was uh, boost the drive bit. So in the macros again, FX2, push the drive a little bit more than the other two, probably twice as much, about that much, about 2 o'clock on a clock dial. Now as we dial this round, it's going to increase the amount of saturation and just fuzzy the sound up even more. If you want to make the envelope more plucky, you got two options really. You can either pull this cut off knob down or decrease the envelope to decay amount. The easiest way is the decay on envelope 2. The more we pull that to the left, the less time it's going to take for the envelope to close up again, so it's going to be quicker. Uh, the, the, yeah, it's going, to be, it's going to take less time for it to close up, so the pluck is going to be shorter. Turn the delay on. I mean, I'd love to have a macro to control this as well, if I could assign that to the same macro of, as the filter resonance. So as you're opening the decay up, the filter resonance increases, but it's quite limited the amount you can do inside this synth, but there's always ways you could modulate this indoor if you wanted to. Simple delay, look, if we wanted to do it indoor. In Ableton, envelope to decay is there. I mean, you could gradually increase it over the whole, what have we got here, it's eight bars. So yeah, if the parameters you've got in the in your door you find you can't modulate, don't be afraid to sort of navigate to them and then do it inside your door. But yeah, for now that is it. A nice, simple, deep house bass with Native Instruments Razor. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe up here. Made many more tutorials to come with all of the synths that I use. If you've got any questions about Razor or any of the synths that I use, please get in touch. It's mrnfox22 at gmail.com. Or the easiest way is to check me out on Twitter or my Facebook page. Uh, sound Design Tutorials is Facebook or tweet me at Sound Design Tuts. Okay, thanks again for watching. I'll just play this out quick with a little beat. Okay, there you have it. Thanks again for watching. I say cheers.